Welcome to the Astro Imaging Journey channel. Please enjoy the episode. Hello and welcome back to my Astro Imaging Journey channel. And in today's episode, uh, I'm going to plan out a little bit of asteroid hunting. Uh, this is a twofer. Um, the Astro Imaging channel uh, is doing a collaboration where they're asking everybody that watches them to submit their images or slideshows or anything they have of anything in the Orion constellation um, to their channel uh, by February and uh, they will put together a little collaboration uh, in one of their upcoming live streams where they will take it all and uh, put it together as a little mini video. They did this uh, uh, early, you know, last year in 2020 with uh, Comet Neowise, and it was pretty cool to see uh, you know, different people's perspective. I know I've talked about this before. Uh, so what I'm hoping to do uh, is do a little asteroid hunting, at the same time do a wide field of the Orion constellation and let me pull up the video the test video I did the other night okay so as you can see I took a bunch of frames what I did was I mounted uh, my DSLR to the top of the telescope and put on a uh, 10 to 18 millimeter uh, lens on it I think it was set to, uh, in the metadata, I think it was set to about 11 millimeters with F5. And if we look at one of the frames here, you can kind of see the telescope right here. Maybe not so much in the, after YouTube compresses it, but it'll be more prominent here in a second. But if we look, I clearly was out of focus. This was more, what's the perspective I'm going to get? And um, will Backyard EOS work with the way I have things set up with the remote PC out at the telescope? Uh, so here is the time lapse I did. And you can see the trees are moving out of frame as the telescope is tracking. Uh, Got some of our USB cables coming into the remote PC down here in the bottom. And then our dew shield right here. So you can see we're focused in on this little area for the telescope. And uh, let me play that again. So you can see the transitioning of the trees. And I think... I think this will be an interesting perspective uh, if I focus in, let me get back over to Stellarium. So if I focus in somewhere in the middle, you know, right around Orion's heart, and I should get a good perspective. So if I bring up my image sensor frame, this is what, if I use this star right here, and I just randomly chose one roughly where Orion's heart is, and this would be my perspective of the field that we could do some asteroid searching for um, using Astrometrica. And then if I switch over my camera to uh, the T6i. And did I put in the 10 millimeter? Yes, I did. So you can see I'm going to have a wide field um, perspective, which should be look pretty interesting. Uh, I think it's closer to 
the 18 millimeter uh, but you know that'll show should show a nice transition as of the trees dropping out of frame as we're capturing data to hunt for asteroids but also be able to have Orion right in the middle of the frame. So I think that'll be a nice little twofer. Um, do a little asteroid hunting as well as get a wide field perspective. And depending, so if we go back over here, you know, we can see that these drop out and then once these drop out, we might actually be able to stack some of this um, and see what it gets us. I mean, clearly, we'll have the telescope and everything in there, but it should stack pretty well. I'm not seeing any drift or anything. I mean, stars seem to pretty much stay in their position. not really seeing any drift so that once the trees drop out of frame we should be able to get a good uh, stack as well so maybe we'll get a three for maybe we'll get a stack a slideshow um, of the transiting night sky and uh, also some asteroid hunting so to that end I think that might be a good star to hone in on. So that is uh, HIP 26513. So let's go over to SGP and see if we can find that. So we're already there. Let's go to Tools, Framing a Mosaic Wizard. Let's do hip 26513 and see if that comes up. And there it is. So if I draw my box, and I guess really doesn't matter. You can set it to zero for the rotation. Maybe I'll want that off just a little bit. Won't be able to get that other one in frame. Kind of just want that star to be right in the middle. So we'll set our rotation right there, 40 degrees. That should be pretty good. So we'll create our sequence. Let's make sure everything else is set. Uh, scale, pixel, yep, everything else is set. So we'll create a sequence. And I'm going to call this Ryan's Heart Asteroid Hunting. And let's go ahead and click OK. That's going to be all the way at the bottom. I'm not going to need anything but my luminance. So we'll just go ahead and delete the extra events. I want to want my luminance filter. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I'm hoping to do it this weekend. The moon is uh, rising very late. Uh, in the night so early morning and actually let's look at our planning we can see that it rises at 3 32 a.m and it's at 13 percent illumination which we can will definitely uh 
be able to get all of our data in there. And it looks like our transit is at uh, a little bit before 12.30 a.m. But that will be good. And then, uh, yeah, so I will finish setting this up. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with uh, five minute exposures for my luminance filter. Uh, we can just put in a thousand, I guess. And then, just go ahead and click run. It's 88 hours, we don't need that many. Uh, let's do, well, let's see, five minutes gets us 12 per hour. So let's assume five hours. So that is uh, 60. 60 frames should be good. And then I'll just have to move this up and then create another one for after the meridian flip. Um, we all know about my problems with the meridian flips. But, yeah, that should give me what I want. Should give me a good, a good uh, little patch of the sky. Decent amount of frames to uh, do some asteroid hunting in. And also that wide field. That encompasses all of Orion for the Astro Imaging Channel collaboration. And also maybe some stacking of the wide field. I mean, when I did the test with these images, they were all uh, 10 seconds. Well, you know, they were 10 seconds long. I didn't want to go any longer than that. Uh, could I have gone longer? Yes. Uh, you know, we're mounted on the telescope. We're we're tracking. Uh, clearly, we're not getting any drift or anything. So, um, could I go longer? Uh, exposures, yes. That's not the point. The point is to uh, get usable data that will yield a decent uh, time lapse, like this one. Uh, this was 300 and 382 frames, I believe, and it created a 13 second time lapse. So, but I, when, when I was doing the testing, uh, 10 seconds worked pretty well. Uh, if I was more in focus, uh, maybe some of these fainter stars out here would uh, show up a little bit better, but I'm also at F5. I, I might put my F1.8 18 millimeter on there. Um, I do have a 24 millimeter F2.8, but that's a prime lens prime lens and it's very short and I can't get the dew heater on it very well. Uh, my 18 to 35 f1.8 is large enough I can get the dew heater on there. So maybe I'll put that one on instead of this 10 millimeter. It'll still give me a good wide field but I'm not sure yet. But this proof of concept that this will work definitely was worth it. Uh, so, but I know with an F1.8, I could possibly go down to five seconds and still get bright stars, but more frames for the time lapse. Or maybe I'll leave it at 10 seconds, 
can hopefully get some extra uh, detail in some of the sky since we'll be able to capture more light per frame. I'm not sure yet. Tonight's going to be cloudy, so I won't be able to test. Uh, but if we go back to Stellarium, you can see uh, when does that rise. So that'll be rising around 840 in the evening. Imaging can actually start around 620, 625. So that gives me about two hours to do some testing beforehand to dial in the DSLR, make sure it's focused right, um, and test out the settings on you know, what ISO am I going to go with, what uh, because we can also see. Uh, let me go back over here if I pull one of these up. It just, there's a fair amount of noise in there. And I was at 3200 ISO. So maybe I can, with the F1.8, I can drop that from 3200 ISO down to an 800 ISO. Um, 1600 ISO was my breaking point for uh, that Astro Modified T6i. All my testing, 1600 ISO yielded uh, decent frames at five minutes, or excuse me, at two to five minutes. 3200 ISO was had way too much noise in comparison. Um, and since we're only going to be doing 10 seconds more than likely, I might be able to keep it at 1600 ISO, but I might drop it to 800 ISO and I'm not sure. So if I go with five seconds, I'm thinking right now, and the testing I'll do before Orion peaks its head up will be uh, five seconds at 1600 ISO and 10 seconds at 800 ISO. They should be pretty equivalent as far as the frames are concerned and the detail. Uh, what will be the determining the determining factor will be the noise so I will definitely be checking that out uh, but I have my target already in here I just need to move it up set my time starting end times uh, create a meridian flip uh, you know a second target and we should be good because the flip happens around 12.30. We zoom out a little bit. We're at 10 something right now. So 12.30, that's when it's going to do its flip. And we're going to be having the trees come into play here. And then it will end and go behind the trees around 1.30. So hopefully be able to capture it pretty well. And then the other thing, oh, well, we've got Jupiter and Saturn. And this was another uh, reason I wanted to test on this uh, on this night because we all know that coming up on the 21st we have the conjunction so 
let's go to 21. And let me take off the ground. And we should have Jupiter and Saturn over here. So there's the south, southwest. If we're over here. Um, there's Mars, there's the moon. Let me go back to about six o'clock ish. There they are. So from my perspective, where the telescope is currently sitting, it's behind the trees. So I can't do anything where the telescope currently sits. But I did scout out a location uh, that I can move the telescope to fairly easy. And what I'm hoping that will do is I'll be able to do a wide field uh, similar to what we were discussing uh, prior with Orion so that I can show it setting and also if we look at we should have the ability to get Jupiter and Saturn both in the same frame. So this was on the 20th, and then on the 21st, they're a little bit closer, and on the 22nd. So I have three nights effectively that I should be able to get Jupiter and Saturn in the same frame. And then on the 23rd, Saturn's a little bit out. And on the 19th, maybe on the 19th as well, um, we set a rotation. That rotation is zero, so I could probably rotate the camera a little bit. Um, but, yeah, so that's, that's the hope that I'll be able to get the... Conjunction common as it uh, sets. You now there's our horizon line right here. So if I can get out there, usually around six o'clock is when I can do my alignment. And immediately after, I should be able to start imaging and it will set about seven. 30, so I'm going to have maybe an hour, maybe, if we're lucky. So the Orion test will be crucial in making sure I dial in all of my settings uh, for backyard EOS, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, pretty good with, uh, you know, I'll... I'll have to be using either fire capture or ASI capture for Jupiter and Saturn, but yeah, we should be good there. So we'll see how things progress. But anyways, just wanted to throw this together that I was planning it. Uh, this is what I'm hoping to do if everything works out. Um, you know, hopefully this weekend I will get the uh, asteroid hunting and the Orion heart uh, or the wide field uh, Orion uh, completed and my sightings dialed in. And then uh, after that, Jupiter and Saturn in the same frame with a wide field showing them setting. So I'm really hoping that this will work. Uh, but 
If it doesn't, I'll do a follow-up. But for now, I just wanted to throw this planning video together while I was working on it. So with that, I will say thanks everybody for watching. Hope you're staying safe and healthy out there. Please stick around for the outro. As always, clear skies and have a good one. Thanks for watching yet another video from the Astro Mention Junior Channel. Really appreciate your viewership. In our upper right, we have the latest video we've uploaded. In our lower right, we have what YouTube might think you would enjoy. And in the lower left is our subscription button. Please like this video, subscribe if you so choose. As always, clear skies, have a good one, and remember Duke.